<laughs> All right. Welcome back on set. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome to all what, seven. <laughs> hey. Hey. More people will wander in. You know how that yeah, works. It's probably because it's just hard to find over here. It is. Yeah. It is. It's, and it's early. Cold and they're like, that cold, it's like a meat locker over there. <laughs> people were still like hungover from last night. A lot of yeah. people came in. They're like, where is it? I was like, I have no idea. So I mean, like 10 or 15 people out there. Yeah, so they'll so find they're, they're gonna be, they'll be over when we uh, yeah, yeah. I had the better yeah. scenes, we're doing the wrong way to go. Yeah. <laughs> that was All right. Sure not me. So uh, <laughs> first thing sure it is. Can we go into the Tesla? <laughs> yeah. That was so much fun. Apparently last time they were in a Tesla where the seats made fart noises. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that Teslas have like a fart machine in them. You can designate where it farts. It's true, there's a video and everything. Yeah, this is fantastic. We have the, the, I think the driver was just having, I was afraid he was going to wreck the car because he was laughing too much. <laughs> <laughs> like, ah! Oh. Like, what did you read? <laughs> 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 I'm going to be 90 years old and still laughing at farts. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's start with you, David. <laughs> let's let's go back to the beginning of everything. I right? was born a poor black <laughs> child. It's, it's one of my favorite movies. I love that movie. I love that movie. For those who know, know it's the jerk. Yes. It's Steve Martin's best. Yeah, that's for sure. Let's talk about your acting journey. How did you get involved in this craft that you are so good at? Ah, uh, stop it. <laughs> I was um, oddly enough, did church theater starting out. My, my parents used to do a lot of that, so like my mom always directed the shows, my dad was in a lot of them, and so that kind of got me in and all of a sudden the, the church choir. So yeah, I was doing shows about Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and like, yeah, now I'm in the theater doing these types of movies. But yeah, I, I did that, and then in middle school, um, I was really shy and quiet and all that, and I got bullied a lot. My mom was just like, classmates seen this other side of you, your silly side. And, uh, and she's like, well, you should let them see that. And she's like, well, your school's doing a production of uh, Mickey's Christmas Carol, <laughs> and you do such a, a really good Mickey Mouse, so why don't you audition for the role of Mickey slash Bob Cratchit? And I'm like, okay, cool. And then we had got the role, and uh, we're doing the show in front of the whole, like, you know, all the parents and everything one night, and everything started going wrong on stage. Like, set fell down on top of Scrooge and I was like, oh, Mr. Scrooge, I think we have rats. <laughs> <laughs> and another part, like our, the, the table during the Cratchit family scene broke and it shot my little chicken over the audience. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I guess we're having fast food tonight, folks. <laughs> and I just started improvising and everybody laughing. I'm like, oh my God, I love this feeling. Because like first time at that school, people were laughing with me instead of at me. Yeah. And I was like, I like this, I'm gonna do more of this. And so my mom really got me into doing like community theater. And I, I so I did that for years and learned from my betters, I would say. I didn't I never would I never had like formal training in acting. I just sort of like made it on stage. And oh and now we have sound. <coughs> So yeah, so I just continued doing that, and then um, when I went to college, I was trying to be practical and pragmatic with my life, and I'm like, okay, I, as much as I want to be an actor, I know it's not the most stable career path, especially financially, and I'm like, I want to be able to support a family and all that, so I'm like, okay, well, I come from family teachers, I'm, I'm great with kids and all that good stuff, and so I was like, ah, I'll go into be an uh, elementary school teacher, so I studied to become an elementary school teacher in college, got my degree in it, and um, my, one well, of my last years of college, my mom passed away from cancer, and that kind of changed my whole perspective on life. I was like, yeah, I, I, my mom's last words of wisdom to me were, do what you want to do with your life, not what you think you have to do. Like, you, you, you only get one shot at all this, so live life to the fullest and don't look for regrets. And it's sunk in that next year when I was doing my internship in the schools, and I, I went through a lot of stuff. It was like a year after my mom died. And that month I went back, my dog died, my grandmother died, one of my friends committed suicide, and my sister married a homeless man who was now in jail for no 
molesting little girls. So that's fun. <laughs> and all that happened like the one month time period and my brain was going, I, had, uh, 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 I was very depressed and I had an epiphany one day reading stories to my students and I was doing all the silly voice of all the characters. And they're like, no, oh, let's go and do another story, do another story. I'm like, no guys, we gotta go into math. And they're like, oh no. And it hit me, I'm like, yeah, this is, I, I get more fulfillment out of entertaining my students than teaching them. I'm like, this is what I really need to do with my life. This is what brings me you know, joy is entertaining people. And I talked to my dad that night, had a big speech prepared because I know he's, he's a NASA engineer, he's a very practical man. And he's like, oh, your mom and I always thought you should be an actor, we just didn't want to tell you what to do with your life. So why don't you just um, take a year off, get your head back in the game, and then finish up your degree, and then go and do what you want to do. I was like, what? <laughs> I was expecting the whole opposite of this, you know? It's like, no, no, this is, we just want you to do what makes you happy. And I'm like, oh, well, thank you. And I had a whole rousing speech prepared and everything, but yay. To change your mind, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But it worked out, and it took me, you know, several years. I moved up to New York and uh, did a lot of shows here and there, toured with uh, How the Crystal Christmas the Musical for five years. I actually came through here in Houston back in 2010 with the show. Yeah, um, and um, eventually Terrifier came along and changed my life. <laughs> now, Rick, you're not an actor. I am an actor. <laughs> <laughs> I got snubbed from the Academy Awards. <laughs> like, can we talk about Can I say this? Actually, it's funny. I, um, I, when the Academy Awards came out, I took like Best Supporting Actor and I made these sheets out and I did the exact font with my name under it and I legitimately was signing and just giving it out to people and so many people were like, oh my God, you got nominated for Academy Award. I'm like, you know, it was a small part, but I put my heart and soul in it. And I'm like, oh, but I am, uh, now I, I, I first started, um, you know, as a director, I, I did short films and stuff. So, you know, I always would put myself like little cameos in my movies and stuff. So that's why I led into Terrifier. And now, um, I mean, I no one knows this. David doesn't even know this, but I get gigs. Like so many people hit me up for gigs. Most of them are probably not paying gigs, but I just don't have the time because, you know, I nobody knows I make custom hockey masks for a living. And that's what I do. So, uh, but I am going to be in a, uh, it's a Halloween fan film, which is that they have a lot of money behind it. It comes out in Halloween. And unfortunately, everybody wants me for movies, but they want me for selfie guy. Yeah. So I, I did it one time, and I told Damien, I said I'm doing it one time, this is a whole terrifier thing, but uh, I do have the fuck yeah girl in the other movie too, but uh, it's more of a horrible. fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> but actually the scene's really cool. Um, so I'm with my beautiful wife, and uh, we have a little kid, and they're two, we're, everybody's trick-or-treating, and randomly there's an Arthur Clown cosplayer walks over, and me and me and her go over excited to get like you know the picture with art and and as we turn around we see our kid standing there and I walked over to grab him and it's Michael Myers just like staring down at the kid and we're like oh cool cosplay so it's it's a pretty cool scene so <laughs> what no yeah. <laughs> yeah so so how did you get involved in acting arts like what was was it a grade school thing that no, you really I, loved straight I mean I just I'm wearing a basketball jersey I was a jock my whole life um, I played semi pro baseball um, I was I played poker for a living so I have no but I did want to do some movies, so I wanted to direct some movies. I wanted to be the next Tarantino, like everyone, and that was it. And I just, it's, it was great. And I, I, so funny, I knew David before, and I actually met Damien at a convention, and that was it. And we, we, we you know, we became buddies after a night of some fireballs. And I think he was like, "Dude, you got to be in my movie." And I was like, "Hell yeah, that was it." And yeah, fuck yeah. Legend, yeah, the <laughs> selfie guy legend moved on. So. Oh my god. And the, can we talk about your business? Your Thirteen X Studios. Sure. How did that come about for you, darling? Just one day, I uh, it was after Halloween seven years ago, and I uh, big huge Halloween fan, and I told my wife out of the blue, I said I'm going to start making custom hockey masks, and she's like, okay. And <laughs> my goal, my goal, I said, if I can sell a dozen in the next three months, I'm on to something, and I sold a hundred, and then. At the end of the year, I said my goal for the first year, I said my goal was to sell 100 masks, and I think I was at 3,000. And then, out of how my life completely changed was 
I did a Jay and Silent Bob mask and someone took a picture of it and sent it to Kevin Smith and Kevin's brother called me the next day and said, we got an exclusive deal for you um, if you're down. So I've been in business with Kevin for six years. So it's uh, I'm Jay and Silent Bob mask. And actually I'm gonna see Kevin and Jay next weekend at Spook Hollow. So I'm looking forward, so yeah. Do we have any audience questions at the moment? Was there any, um, like did you study any mimes or clowns to bring the character to life? No, I really, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Go ahead, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I mean, I think I tore, I tore my rotator cuff. I'm not joking, I tore my rotator cuff. Everyone's mocking me. I think it's because I do so many selfies. I'm like, I can't, I'm not joking. I can't even put my shirt on. <laughs> it wasn't, it should have been this arm, uh, you yeah. know, but that's a joke. 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 No, that's just the hairy one. <laughs> oh. But um, no, I was never actually professionally trained in mime or anything. I know that's a rumor that's out there. I'm like, no, 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 no. I have more respect for myself. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, shots fired to the miming community. <laughs> watching like the great silent comedians. I was given a great education in, you know, physical comedy growing up. I was watching the, the old black and white, you know, comedies like Marx Brothers, Old Hardy, Chaplin, Buster Keaton, all that. But um my aunt, when I was a teenager, she gifted me a box set of Mr. Bean videos. And I was like, this is amazing. And I would just watch those over and over and over. I'm surprised I didn't wear the tapes out. Because I just found that like that brand of comedy so fascinating is that that very silent mischievous type of character and i always wanted to play a character like that and, and you know so i've I studied him a lot studied uh, jim carrey a lot andy circus doug jones all those guys i just you know i just sit there and just devour that kind of stuff. I, I, I remember like when like two towers came out on like dvd they had like behind the scenes stuff and they had a whole featurette about andy circus doing gone and all this and he, movements and so I would sit there and mimic him all over my house. I would just be jumping on furniture and bounding around like Gollum. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, what is wrong with you? Maybe you should go back into teaching. <laughs> and that's why I just learned and like it tried to adapt, you know, what I was watching and you know that's why it's like when this audition for Tarot Card came up, I was like, oh my God, that's perfect because I had seen all Hallows Eve so I saw that, I was like, oh my god, that, he's kind of like an evil Mr. Bean. I would love to have a, a chance to play a character like that, and now I do. <laughs> so it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. But no mimes. <laughs> right, I throw, actually, I would like to throw this one story about David. Um, this is, uh, it, it, it's been on my mind all morning, I, I definitely want to share it. Um, it. It's my David story. Absolutely fantastic. So, um, as he said, you know, he lost his mom. I lost my dad two years ago. Still, this morning, I was Cried. It's the worst thing in the world to have a death. And about, I want to say about a year ago, how my life changed with David is I was having a really bad day. I hate seeing my mom sad. That's what kills me. So I was having a really, really bad day and just, just crying, sad. It's still, it's hitting me every day. And then out of the blue, um, something happened online that I saw and it hit me. And later on, I had tears when my wife walked in the door and she's like, ah, oh, she knew I was really having a bad day. And she went over and she's like, I'm so sorry. And she's like, you know, your dad's looking down on you. And I said, it's not my dad, it's David. And she said, what is going on? I said, David had a bigger line than fucking Robert Englund at Monster Mania. And I was crying, I was happy tears. So that's my David story. I think it was Monster Mania. Yeah. His line was fucking bigger than Robert fucking Englund's and that fucking made my day. And from there on, when I think of sadness, I think of David and his line and it, it, I, I wiped the tears away. So that was me, nuts. I was like, what the hell? It's like, uh, <laughs> that's something I never imagined would ever happen in my life. It's 
it's like to me Robert England's the king. He is like yeah, that's that's you're you're not gonna surpass Robert England. <laughs> so even just to be even close to that was like what? This yeah. is surreal. And it's all because of you guys. It's just like the the the, the response of part two especially God was just mind blowing. Because we weren't just supposed to be in like 500 theaters nationwide for like a weekend. And it just kept snowballing like crazy. It was like, I, I remember because it was the first night because um, uh, the Fuzz guys, uh, Damien, and some of us went out on Staten Island. We snuck into one of the theaters there on opening night without people knowing we were there. So we just wanted to actually see a real reaction from an audience. And and they went nuts, and then we're like, thank you. <laughs> and they're like, oh my god, you know. <laughs> but we, we went to the bar next to the the, um, the theater afterwards, and we're sitting there, and all of a sudden, on Twitter, Damien was on Twitter, and we're just all of a sudden, boom, 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 boom. So everybody just starts posting about Terrifier, and we're like, oh shit, yeah. I think we did something here, guys. And it was just constant, and also the next week, we're, I wake up one morning, my agent's calling me, she's like, my phone's going off like crazy, and she's like, David, um, Howard Stern's people just called me, and I'm like, what? They're like, yeah, they want to know if you can go on a John Lieberman's show and stuff like that. He's a huge fan. He wants to interview, and I'm like, whoa, yeah, 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 yeah. And then it, it just, you know, like, they were talking about us on, like, the talk, you know, like, uh, um, um, Jerry O'Connell and Rebecca Romaine, I'm like, they were going on and on and on about Terrifier, and it just, it, it, because of that, it just kept snowballing, like, then Stephen King tweets about us. Well, like, Damien and I were in line at security at JFK when that came out, and I just let out a, holy shit, holy fuck, right there in the middle of the airport, and everybody's like, I'm like, sorry, sorry, Stephen King, Stephen King, I'm like, that's, that's, the, if, if you get, that kind of like respect from the guy, the man that created Pennywise, who's like, you know, like that's the king of the clowns right there. We're like, holy crap, that's amazing to get that kind of recognition from him. That was, it's, it's been a, a, a crazy ride this past year, you know, especially for Damien. He's been like going everywhere, meeting with all these like, you know, big Hollywood hotshot directors and producers and everything like that. It's just like, and, and I mean, all the studios were approaching us for Terrifier 3. And, you know, that's 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 the thing that Damien really had to consider a lot because they're like, you know, offering us money for Terrifier 3. And he's like, yeah, it's really tempting, but they want control. Mm -hmm. They want to control of this. And he's like, they will not allow me to do the type of movie. I just know they will not allow me to do the type of movie I want to do. And so he, he really did it. He's like, I can't do that to the fans. We, we can't we can't pull back from what we've been doing. This is why we're where we are. It's because we're the ones ballsy enough to do what we're doing, and the fans love it and it's showing. And I think it's you know putting a fire under Hollywood's butt right now. But it's like no, we gotta stick to our guns. And so we are sticking with the people that um, help put part two out, and because they're they're giving us money too, but they're giving us the freedom to do the type of movie we might want to do. So that's why Damien's not here this weekend. He's finishing up the script. And it's it's gonna be nuts. He's even you know, I, I know he wants to go much darker with part three. I haven't read it yet, so I have no idea what he's doing. <laughs> but I know a few things, and I'm like, oh shoot. Oh. <laughs> and you just like messaged me just the other night because I, I just wrote this really awesome, cool kill scene with some certain people he wants to be in the movie, and he's like. I'm giving you a new toy that you're really gonna have a lot of fun with, and I'm like, oh my god! So I'm, I'm excited as much as you guys are to see what he's concocted. But I'm, I will say that if you go see part two again in the theaters, um, we added an extra scene that is gonna segue straight into part three. It's gonna give you an idea of where we're going with part three, and it's I, I, I like to say it's our little early Christmas gift to the fans, even though it's November. It's like, yeah, this is just a big thank you to guys for supporting us. It's like, you guys got us where we are, so we want to do something extra for you guys, just to give you a little taste of what's to come. So I, I'm very excited, because then I can finally talk about this one thing we've been keeping a secret from you guys for about a year. So it's like, mm -hmm. goody, goody, goody. So this extra scene, is it going to be in the movie, or is it like a post-credit type? It's a post-credit. So stay till the end. You know, don't leave. 
Stay till the end. Oh my goodness, that's a good thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm very relieved to hear that um, we're not going big studio, because of course I knew that he was getting offers and stuff, I said, but if they're gonna like take the movie, take the gore, it's gonna get an X rating, and they won't let him get an X rating, like they did with Hatchet, they like, like Hatchet. Yeah. It was still a good movie, but it wasn't what Adam Green wanted, yeah. you know? And so, yeah, so I'm glad, I'm really relieved to hear that. It's the first I've heard, and I was really relieved yeah. to hear that, yeah. Yeah, and I'm just hoping we're encouraging more directors and writers out there to keep experimenting and pushing the envelope of these genres. I think that's what's been lacking in Hollywood is originality. They're all trying to, it's the studio system. They're, they, they're all, they're willing to put all that money into a movie, but they don't want to take the risks. So they like, they play it safe and just keep recycling the same thing over and over and over and over and over because it's safe. And horror, horror and comedy, in my opinion, should never be safe. Those are the two genres that should always be pushing the envelope experimenting and seeing where they can go with things. And I think that's what's been wrong with Hollywood in the past decade or so. It's like, you know, it's like, especially with comedies, and it doesn't even know this is a horror convention, like comedy is my thing. And I feel like we haven't had a good comedy in over a decade in the theater. <laughs> used to, especially back in the 80s, I'm like, God. They all were there. They were on the 80s and 90s, oh my God, the comedies. And they, they, they were coming out like, boom, all the time. And, I think like one of the last great comedies we had was either The Hangover or um, uh, 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 Tropic Thunder yeah. or something like that. It's like I miss those type of comedies. And so and I, I'm hoping that not just with us with Terrifier, because I, I hope that we're just encouraging people to start taking risks again. I think that might be a good thing because you know the the SAG strike that's been going on. I got talked about that because I mean I'm a SAG member, and, and I think this you know luckily for us most of the movies I've done. We've been able to get interim agreements because we're not under the umbrella of the big studios. And I think because of that, there have been a lot of independent films that have been able to be made recently. And I think this strike is going to be a boon to the independent film industry because next year, when all these you know, movies from studios haven't been able to be made, there's going to be that, that dearth in the theaters and like the AMC's, Cinemarks, all that, they're like, we need films to show. And I think they're gonna start reaching out to all these independent filmmakers. And like, well, you got this movie, I made, can you put this in the theaters? And so I'm hoping that that's what's gonna happen. So it's, I'm hoping we're gonna see a new renaissance in, uh, in, in film right now. So, fingers crossed on that. Yeah, for sure. Um, what's it like to do an audition without lines? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> that that was a very interesting audition because I, I I am so accustomed to scripts and I, I'm a voiceover guy too, so I, I'm used to you know, having all that. I have always used uh, the character voice to help me determine who, who the character is and everything like that too. And I walked into because uh, Terrifier was my first time really auditioning for a real movie, and because I was always just a stage actor, voiceover actor, and I was like, okay, cool. Okay, this is my first big role that I'm going out for in the film. Okay, can't mess this up. And I was like, oh, I never got sides. And so, oh, no, sometimes they just have sides in the room and stuff like that. So um, I go in there and I ask the front desk, like, oh, no, we don't have sides. I'm like, you should have gotten those from your agent. I'm like, shit. <laughs> I'm going to kill my agent. And because everybody else in the room's got sides. And, and they call me in the room, and I'm like, I'm so nervous. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I never got any sides. Uh, if I can just get some, I'll, I'll just take five minutes to look over them real quick, and I'll, I'll be ready to go. And like, Damien's like, oh, no, don't worry about it. it, it art doesn't speak. You don't need sides. So I was like, OK. <laughs> cool. So <laughs> what do you want me to do then yeah. for this audition? You know? And he's like, ah, just. Come up with a scene where you um, de decapitate a guy and you're happy about doing it. And go. I'm like, well, again, can I have a few seconds to think about it? Like, no, 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 I just want to see what you do with your feet. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And this is why I always say it's important for every actor to have some kind of uh, training or experience with improvisation because you never know. Because I've even had this happen with me in the room with voiceover auditions where they just throw a character at me in the last second. I'm like, hey, do a voice for a tree, go. And this is what happened. 
and I, I'm like, okay, and I just, I turned off my brain, let whatever happened happen, you can find the audition online. But um, I, I did just did this whole thing where I kind of cartoonishly snuck up behind my victim and like knocked him out and like I sawed off his head with a hacksaw, picked it up, tasted it, didn't like the taste of the blood, so I take that out salt shaker and season it some. Uh, <laughs> like, hmm, okay, this is much better. And kind of bathe in the blood and all that and give it a thumbs up and skip out my merry way. And at that point, like uh, Damien and our producer, Bill, have got their heads on the table laughing their butts off. And they're like, I'm like, anything else you guys need? And they're like, ah, Jesus. Um, <laughs> uh, can you come in for a makeup test? And I'm like, yeah, sure. I'd be happy to. I'm like, are you okay with makeup? I'm like, yeah, I've played a lot of weird characters in the past where I've had to wear a lot of makeup, so I'm kind of used to that process. I'm like, okay, cool. And, and uh, I kind of left there that day thinking, okay, I've got this, I've got this. And that's, that's, a, that's a very unusual thing to have, have happen in, this, um, in, the, in the film industry. You usually have to go back for multiple auditions. I know Lauren and Elliot had to go back like four or five times to read with different people to see you know, how they synced up with everybody. And, that this was I walked out of that room knowing I had the part basically, and, but I didn't know officially until like a few months later when they finally brought me into the makeup test, <laughs> and I had a kind of a final audition with that. Uh, they're, they're like, okay, um, here's your final audition. This is gonna make us know that you're definitely ready for the part. We just ordered pizza. Here comes the pizza guy. Answer the doors, Art. <laughs> A legitimate pizza guy? Yes. <laughs> it's the middle of the daytime in Staten Island, and I'm like, okay, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> and I just opened the door, and I was like, <laughs> and I just go with the money. <laughs> and it, it, this guy just like, oh hell no, <laughs> no, no sir. <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> and I'm just like. <laughs> he just hands me, he's like, okay, what is going on? And I'm just like, and I just slam the door right in his face. <laughs> They're like, you got the role. <laughs> and then I also went outside, just walked around, and it was like, it was like a house that Phil had out there that he was renovating it. And so the neighbors were out there, the kids were playing in the yard, they see me walk outside, and they're like, ah! I, I, I think the one mom got really pissed off at Phil. Like, what the fuck are you doing? What is this? Are you trying to scam my kids? Ah. I was like, this is great. This is, I was like, we were on to something. I was like, I think one of those times when we really knew we were on to something where the way I looked in just broad daylight in suburbia was enough to really freak people out like that. So I was like, okay, we got something here. <laughs> so, Rick. I would think yes. you, now that you are uh, Mr. Famous, you must have a lot of selfie guy haters. Is that true? So, uh, yeah, I didn't know where I wanted to go with this. I kind of told him the story the other day, and I was like, I don't know if I should talk about it, but. He didn't tell me the story. No, he said he had no, a story. It's, it's I just know nothing. About, I, I think it's going to be too, it, it's just too so, rough. But no, it's all good. It's all good. So no, no, listen. But this is what it's 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 regarding a, a pre-terrifier hater um, about a Kevin Smith mask I made. It's really not. Uh, it's it, it's very funny, but it's it's kind of dirty. But and, <laughs> I know it's real. Right, 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 right. I mean, is anybody so? Everyone I, here is seen terrifier, yeah, right? I, I mean, could I say? <laughs> could, I say butt. could I say bang? Sorry. Would you rather have me say bang or fuck? Is that, it does it matter? Is anybody gonna get offended? Fuck! All right. Yeah. So real, real quick, I, uh, I, I made a Kevin Smith. Wow, that's a sign from God. <laughs> um, I, I made a Kevin Smith mask. Kevin Smith posted online and said like, hey, buy the Simon Bob mask. And one of the comments, someone wrote, they put this is dumb. And I was like, you know, I'm not gonna respond to that. Whatever it is, what it is. So like later that night, after probably 15 tequila shots, um, I wrote the person a message, and I said, I just am curious, why do you think the Silent Bob mask is dumb? And he wrote right back to me, and he said, because it's dumb. And I said, but why is it dumb? And he said, because it's dumb. Oh and I said, well, guess what? And he said, what? We were going back and forth. And I said, well, I fucked your mother. <laughs> so he wrote back, and he said, no, you didn't. 
And I said, bro, I fucked your mother. So then he wrote back again, he goes, no, you didn't. It went on like this, and I'm reading this online. My, my wife is dying laughing. So I, I just said, I said, you know, so he comes back at me, he said, dude, you did not fuck my mother. And I said, no, I fucked your mother. And he said, my mother's happily married to my father. And I said, well, when he leaves, I sneak over there and fuck her. So then she came back and said, no, you don't, no, you didn't, I know you didn't. And I said, dude, I fucked your mother. And this went on for 45 minutes. So finally, I think he gave up and he started putting sad emojis. And I'm like, oh man, I like this poor guy really thinks I fucked his mother. <laughs> so I, I said, I had no idea who he was. I clicked on his page, and it was a fucking ten-year-old kid. Oh. So now I'm like, oh no. So I wrote him and I said, hey man, I didn't fuck your mother. And then he wrote back and said, good, I feel a lot better. And then, then he put dot dot dot, and then he said your mask is still dumb. And I said, well, guess what? I'm lying, I really fucked your mom. So that was my story. But now my other real, real quick one, now what I do with hate, I don't have a lot of haters, people mostly like me, but there's this, just what I do, and this is the best way, like it really gets them. Like someone wrote like, why a selfie guy there? You know, blah, 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 blah. And I write back and I say, yeah, fuck selfie guy, fuck that guy. So that guy probably got a notification on his phone saying, oh, I want to battle selfie guy. And then he's like, Wait a minute, he said, fuck himself. So yeah, that's how I do it. So anyway, that's my example. I, love, I <laughs> love that when you're I was gonna use that, that I was gonna use that at the Academy Awards speech. I was gonna do the fuck your mother's, uh, you know. <laughs> it's like reaching out to the little boy and then, hey. So now that little kid probably is like, damn, mom, mom, she is cheating on dad. <laughs> your Academy Awards dumb. <laughs> So anyway, that was my excitement. Uh, can I just share one other funny thing? Uh, so one year ago, I was in Austin for the second, uh, for the premiere of Terrifier 2. David was at the first one, I went to the second one. So one year from, I think today, and um, I was telling Damien that, like my whole thing, I said, I was gonna shoot a little documentary called Selfie King, and it was gonna, a whole bunch of celebrities were gonna be just, it's Selfie Guy wanted to make it in Hollywood. It's on YouTube, it's fantastic. But my other idea that I went, like, me, Damien, and Phil, like we were loaded all night. And we started, I said, this was my other idea. Instead of doing that, I was gonna do a short film. But then Damien's like, go with the documentary. I think it'll, you know, it'll be pretty cool. So anyway, and David, it was, uh, David's the best, he's in the end of it. And it's like, he's like, I can't believe you did a movie and I wasn't in it, you know, <laughs> fuck you. It was great, and anyway, he, he steals it. And then Billy Pond did another one. He did. These guys are, they're crazy. Everyone likes Billy Pond out there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Has anyone I seen the Selfie King movie? Anybody watch YouTube? it? Nobody watch it. Well, you got it, because I'm... <laughs> it's really fun. It's really funny. So just go to YouTube. It's like 45 minutes. It's, it's really cute. funny. It's, it's 45 funny. minutes of him jerking off to himself, really. But... <laughs> <laughs> so hey, you guys got to give me props, man. I, listen, I went in the movie. Damien just said, hey, do you want to be in the movie? I said, yes. Then he said, I want to be in a Halloween scene. No, no idea what was going on. And then I was like, make the best of it. So I got permission from Kevin Smith to do the movies. And then look where I'm at. I'm sitting with fucking David right now. Like, gotta give me props, man. I mean, I, I unfortunately started like, you know, uh, I opened the floodgates for others, <laughs> you know. Um, but I, I will say this thing, I, I, if this is about David, and, and, and I just, everybody knows I want David to do his thing. But uh, one thing I do wanna say is that like, you know, I have my business, that's how I make my money. But I used to charge $10 for autographs. And I said, it, it's kind of my ode to City Hate because that's what he charged. And in Atlanta, um, at, in Atlanta Days of the Dead, I signed 245 items. And in Indy, I sold, uh, uh, signed 165 items for 10 bucks each. So it was extra money in my pocket. I say it's beer money. But I was going to Mad Monster a couple weeks ago, and I started thinking, like, how, like, what Terrifier fans mean to me, and the stories, and, the, you know, it's crazy, you know? And, it, and I said, I'm never again gonna ever charge anything for autograph or anything. And again, I had my business, so everybody else, they're, they're actors, this is what they get, they do their thing, but, so, that's what I'm like. I, I care so much about everybody, and it's it, it, you guys all like me. You don't even understand. So I appreciate you guys big times. And just being me, being a fan, you know, I love everybody from the movie. They're they're awesome. They just I love everyone what they're doing. Ellie, I got that first time I ever met Elliot um, a couple weeks ago, and I got to spend time with his family. Just beautiful people, and that's you know. And Lauren was there, and uh, Wesley I met, and you know, I stay in touch with everybody, and like everybody means the world to me. So thank you guys. Truly.
That was my Academy Award you speech. Know, that would have been good. That would have been good. Not the fuck with your mother story. That would probably be an event so good. You're dumb. <laughs> Isn't it funny? I just tell that story and everybody's like, oh, and so many people say this. They're like, this kid is so nice. What a good guy. But then I just did the whole fuck your mother story. So I guess behind the scenes, I'm not that nice. But no, I'm just kidding. So. Yeah, you're, you're kind of into it with that uh, pizza story. But was there a point during either of the films that you thought, well, we really have something uh, here, the, not that it's going to become what it has, but yeah, we're talking, yeah no, we're, we've really got something special here, um, just another run of the mill uh, horror film. I, I think that wasn't really when we were filming, though, uh, it was more like when we did our very first convention at Men Monster in 2018, like, uh, like, Damien and I were just like, okay, we'll see how this goes, we'll hope people like our movie and stuff like that, and uh, we had, uh, oddly enough, He's got the same last name as me, but he, he got um, a tattoo of me there at the convention. And I'm like, holy crap, wow, someone has got a tattoo of me. That's insane. They want my face on their body for the rest of their life. I'm like, I don't even want my own face on my body for the rest of my life. So I'm like, this is insane. And, and that's, uh, then when there was someone that was cosplaying as art of that too, because I, I used to cosplay as Joker a lot at conventions. So it's like, I know how, how that is. And it's like, you don't know, cosplay characters unless you and stuff like that. And I was like, wow, this is, I guess we're onto something. This is interesting. And it just kept snowballing from there. Now, I mean, I, I remember there was a time where like Damien and I would try to document every single tattoo that we, we saw. We would like show pictures of every tattoo and it just got to be like way too many tattoos. And like, oh my God. And that, that everyone is like completely different from each other too. There, there's some really creative ones out there too. So that, 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 that's when I, I think that really started clicking. It's like, oh, this is actually going to go somewhere. People want merchandise. And there's, there's also at that same convention, there was a lot of you know, unlicensed merchandise. I'm like, they're already? I'm like, this is insane. I was like, this is cool. So yeah. Uh, could I add in? I, don't, I actually t uh, text Amy that I, I told him this. Um, I swear to you, this. I'm sure you've seen it. 80% of the people here at this convention have a terrifying shirt on. How many Terrifier shirts were out there? Yeah. Like it was insane, and it's 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 great. Pretty Thank cool. You. <laughs> yeah. I really yeah. enjoyed when Terrifier one got re-released in theaters recently for that one night. I really enjoyed your little extra tribute to fans at the end, and you had a whole tattoo section of yeah. that video. Yeah, that was cool. That, that was really neat. That was cool. Just re-releasing that, especially the same weekend. You know. Barbara, uh, Barbara, uh, Barbenheimer and stuff like that. So, because yeah. Damien and I did a guest appearance at one of the theaters in New York City that night, just to you know welcome people in and thank him. It was so funny because we all of a sudden we saw these people walking into the theater all wearing pink or like, hmm. <laughs> y'all here to see Terrifier? <laughs> oh no, no, no! We're here to see Barbie. <laughs> Should have kept our mouth shut. Let them just sit there and watch it. See? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But that, that was the kind of funny thing to see happen. I was like, this is really cool to just seeing that re-released. It did pretty well, you know, re-release yeah. like that. So I was like, that was that was pretty nuts. I'll tell you something. I went to the re-release. I never, I didn't see. I was late to the Terror Card game, y'all. I'm sorry. I was like four years late, three years late, or something, right? I didn't see it until 2018. <clears throat> but like late, so my recommendation to my friend Leanne, she goes, there's a scene, <sighs> you got to see Terrifier, and so I was like, okay, I'm in, um, and I love the twist at the end, I was like, if you saw that twist coming, you're fucking lying, anyway, I went to go see it, and I, you know, I've seen it several times since, obviously, and I went to go see it in the theater, and I picked up on so much more than I did on my DVD or on my streaming device, like, Visually, musically, I heard so many different things. I love orchestrations. I love, and how you guys worked with the music, with the scenes, and I was just like. That, that's all Paul Wiley right there. Yeah, I heard so much more, and I got so much more out of it seeing it on the big screen than I ever had, even on a big TV. So if you guys have the opportunity to see part one again in the theater, you've got to do it. It was amazing. <clears throat> It's definitely, both films are definitely films that are made for big screen audiences and stuff like this. A group that, environment. Yeah, it's that, that's the type of film you have to see with a big group of people. That's what I thought was so cool about your 
who they release. So hearing those stories of people puking and passing out and all that, I'm like, this is awesome! Because it was real. That was not us. And people were like, oh, this is probably just, you know, fake publicity yeah. and just trying to get people. I was like, we don't have a budget for that. <laughs> I was like, no, this is real. I've had so many people at conventions. It's like, yeah, I worked at a theater and, you know, someone puked right there at the, the exit and stuff like that. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> oh no, I'm sorry you had to clean that up. I think it was Steve Barton. He was involved. So. <laughs> Steve uh, awesome. the, uh, the people would send me videos of you know just how audiences would react, and I, and like one of my favorite ones, like we snuck into a different theater in New York one night, and there was a guy just sitting in the row behind me the whole entire movie. He's like, Oh my god! Ah! Ah! And I was like, and I was dying the whole time. I had to turn around to him after the movie. He's like, Dude, you just made my week. This was like, your reaction. He was like, you just thought I was just some random guy and the, the behind the scenes stuff started up and it was me on the screen. It's like, oh shit! <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Your, your reactions are exactly what I was wanting this whole entire time. Especially, the one, one of my favorite reactions in the whole movie, and I was always waiting for it, it was like the, the scene with the, 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 the stab to the pecker. Because you would hear every single guy in that theater just go, oh! I'm just waiting for it. It's like, three, two, one, oh! I'm like, yes! Yes, yes. That's, that's just satisfying. What were the reactions to the alley scene? Oh, God. People, that's, that was a fun one, too. Yeah. Just like, I remember like, that guy behind me was like, oh my God, she's still alive? Oh my God, how? Oh my God, he's bringing salt in. He's bringing salt. He's a salty bastard. This guy was hysterical. I was like, he's like, oh my, is that bleach? Oh! What I was wanting. This is what I was wanting. And I, I remember also when we did the, the screening in Austin for the premiere, Sarah that plays Barbara in the movie, she had not seen the, the especially since she had not seen the, the alley kill. And she just, after that, all that's done with, she just turns to Damien in the middle of the theater and just goes, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> and uh, of course the audience just loses their minds on that. It's like, especially when it comes from, you know, Barb, it was just like, this is great. This is just great. Oh, I love it. No. I made the theater laugh when I saw the salty scene because um, it, unintentionally I was into it as a friend. Mm -hmm. Forgot I was not at home. And when you come in with the bleach, I'm like, oh, that's just rude. Yeah. Everyone laughed. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, it, it was just that was that was fun. that was like one of those things where Damien and I were just bouncing ideas off each other. Yeah. I, I think he wanted me to do bleach or something. Now I can't remember what else, but I, I came up with the whole salt idea. I was like, yeah, because I was like, it was also a nod to my audition. Yes. And I was like, yeah, this, this would be kind of funny. You pour, pour, literally pour salt in the wound, and I said, an idiom out there is like, well, why don't we actually do that? Yeah. Like, let's do that. You're our new salt bay. Yeah, I even did that one I, I had I did so many different takes with the salt. And I was like, I, that, that's the thing. Damien lets me play around so much on these sets. So he's got so much bonus footage he could probably release one day, especially with the the, uh, the costume shop scene. I I was like a kid in the candy store that night. That was that was a, kind of our homage to like Pee-wee's Big Adventure as well. And it was I had some like, I went down the whole entire rack of glasses and was doing some different things with each pair of glasses. And I was God, I don't know how we got through that night. We were all giggling so much. It was it was so much fun. I love those those kind of scenes where he's like just playing. It's like like that scene with um the dinner scene with Barbara. He's like I just want you know. To, you to bring in mashed potatoes and somehow put them in her face. You come up with the rest. And I just kind of went in there and just came up a whole routine of serving dinner to him and doing all this kind of stuff. And he was like, that's great. And I was like, it is, but the apron, I did not know I was going to be wearing an apron for that. And Olga, our customer, she brings out this apron with cats all over it. I'm like, oh my God, this is per perfection. I'm like, this is my Miss Doubtfire moment of the movie. So. I had so much fun. That was just, that was fun. Just, Hello! <laughs> I was like, oh, they, they could never stop me that night. I was like, oh, my dear, you're about to quit this success as we did. It's like, oh. It's so crazy how the glasses thing took off, too. Oh, I like, know. Oh, my God. And, and thank you, by the way. You guys can go to my booth. I have Art the Clown mask with the glasses on. I, I think those people that made those, like, those glasses are probably so happy now. Like, you guys have, like, kept us afloat. <laughs> but I, I personally,
honestly like the, the hand glasses. Yeah, yeah, I think those are funnier. Those are my favorite ones. Yeah. I, I I, I, I think they're funnier, but they're also just an homage to the first one where I'm doing the whole freezing yeah. thing there with the blood all over my hand. So I was like, oh, this is great. Yeah. I also had a whoopee cushion in it, but that didn't make it in there. I was doing a little fart sound. For the you want, I also made a mask you were going to use. Do you remember that? Yes, yeah, yeah, I was going to, I was going to, Dave was like, no, we don't have time. And I was going to, I was going to, like the trick or treating scene, I was going to do a whole thing where I was wearing the art found hockey mask over my actual face, and I was going to put my, my uh, knees and my shoes, so I looked like a kid that was trick or treating. <laughs> but he's like, oh, we don't have time. <laughs> it could have been in the special features, you know. know. But you know, Damien. <laughs> the special features one, the new one that's coming out, oh my god, October 10th. Uh, they went around for Days of the Dead Atlanta and they were doing videos with everybody, and they were like, one of the questions they said to me, they're like, you know, how do you feel about the fans? And I was like, oh no. For, um, te legitly tears, and I'm like, Oh, that'll probably never make a thing. And then one of my homies said, hey, by the way, all your scenes are in the special features coming out October 10th. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to get ripped apart for this one. I'm telling you. I have to say it was fun because we had a lot of fans that were involved in the filming of the movie. I mean, like, uh, first of all, the, your scene, the, the Halloween party scene, that was, we had a lot of fans and extras there that night. I actually, well, that was like three nights I filmed that. Four or five, yeah. It was, a, it was a long week. I, I came one night because I just wanted to hang out with all the all the fans and everything like that. And by the way, I want to throw in, David hit me up and he said, hey, I'm going to see you Tuesday at the club. And right away I'm like, oh my God, Art's going to kill everybody in the club. And I was so excited. And then he's like, no, I'm just going to be. He was actually, yeah, I dressed up as a devil. You know, I'm, like, I'm like way, way in the background at one little part of the, the, the scene. I just wanted to just have fun and hang out with everybody. But the other one was when we filmed the Clown Cafe scene, we had a lot of our Indiegogo backers for that one. And that was, it, that was like the week before everything shut down for COVID. And we didn't know, we were up in bumfuck nowhere, Ken Jahari, New York, in the middle of Amish country, which was fun to drive around as art and scaring Amish people. Because they're not expecting that when you drive by in their buggies. And it's like, oh, yeah. like, oh my goodness. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> We, we had all the, you know, the, all these uh, Indiegogo backers there that week, and it brought a new, like, uh, energy to the set, because I, I think we were all kind of dreading doing that scene, because it was so complex, there were so many moving parts, so many stunts that were happening, and lighting people on fire, people, you know, all that kind of, just craziness, we're like, oh god, this is going to be so, so well complicated, and that whole week just went so well, and we had so much fun, we were just partying every single night after filming, and it was so exciting seeing like how excited that the, the fans were to be on set. That just added a new energy to everything, and it was great. We had no idea the world was going to go that mass chaos just a day or two later. It was like this. It was like almost like our last hurrah before the world changed. It was like this is crazy, but it was fun. It was fun having the fans there as part of that experience. It was really cool. Yeah. And Thomas Rickman. Um, which he was the pilot in Clown Cafe. He actually, yeah, made these jerseys for all the uh, show back over the area. Yeah. So he made them for everybody. And, and he has a cool. shop, yeah. online shop. Oh, it? Thomas was shop. so funny too because he he was so excited to be there. So like when he's getting shot, we had to keep redoing his his scene where he's getting shot because he kept smiling the whole. He's like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> dude, you're dying, man. <laughs> oh. Love Thomas. He's yeah. the best. Yeah. He's the best. And he has some cool shirts out there. I got several. He has, and he has a shirt with him, all bloodied up. As a pilot, I, I ordered some shirts from him, or like a big order. And he's like, and I threw an extra one in for you. And it's him. And I'm like, you know what? I'm wearing a See what selfie guy did? See what selfie guy did? The pilot's coming out with shirts now. Yeah. I opened the floodgates. I, I did not the start. He's all bloodied and yeah. stuff. He's like, yeah. Oh, I like that. It's yeah. so cute. I was like, oh, this is so great. And he sent me like an Arcticon, like plushy keychain. So I'm like, I got a keychain. Nice. Well, while Bill Phil puts here, I, I have to tell this, it's very funny. Um, so for the, when Terrifier came out, um, you know, I'm, I, at the time, I was like, yeah, I live in St. Augustine now. Um, but we did, we did like a little premiere in Orlando. It was opening weekend. And I'm not joking, there was 50 seats in the theater. And I said, I'm going to be out there giving out shit. We sold it out in 24 hours. And the best part, and Bill was there, uh, the movie's going on. And I, I went up before the movie, and I'm just like hyping it up. We, we gave like, uh, like autograph stuff to people. Uh, 
Uh, we had some stuff from David. People were so excited. I had a video from Damien saying like, hell yeah, Orlando, you know, have fun at the prayer. And no joke, we, um, I was so excited for everybody to see my scene. So as it goes on, everyone just screams, screams, yells, and my part was over. And no one even heard my lines. And I stood up and I was like, you guys didn't hear the fuck yeah, girl. Like, that was the best part. So uh, it was pretty funny, though. <laughs> well, the funny thing is, too, Damien and I joked around. It's like, let's just do this one prank on Rick. Like, let's like, have that one screen and we actually edit out his sync. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be in the just, oven. just for that one screening, just to fuck with him. <laughs> it's like, no, he'll probably kill himself. <laughs> and what's funny, David said this before on a podcast. I heard it. You were talking shit, and I'm just kidding. Um, I, legit, again, I've been in the business for seven years with my mask, but like, I mean, I got booked at cons before everyone else. I mean, other from David and Damien, I was doing cons, and I was, pro but what it was, I was promoting the word, I was getting it out, getting it out, you know, and, and like you said, you know, I, I, Kevin Smith, it was terrifying for me, you know, and that guy, and then you guys had that screening, Kevin had a screening of terrifying, and I, my mom was in town, it was for the holidays, and I, I, I wanted to go so bad, and Kevin even said, stay with your mom, and it was like, it was, I wanted to go so bad, though, but, it was cool that they all got to meet Kevin, so. Yeah. I was in LA, so I had to do it. Oh, that's right. Year. So I was like right. a giant floating head. That's I right. didn't yeah. realize the camera was on me the whole entire time. <laughs> like, cause it was like me, Catherine, and Jenna had to do it by uh, uh, Zoom or something like that. So we had, we had, cause what we could see on that did not show us on the screen above them. And so I, we had no idea we were on camera. So Catherine and Jenna and I are just like, making faces at each other during the whole thing, you know, just like, oh, no, no, God, there goes Damien again, Bun's life story. <laughs> and then at one point we just did a message like, everybody can see you. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, David was good. David was kind of like, that's like, honestly. <laughs> hey, Kevin could talk too, man. I mean, that went on for like two hours, you know, after, so. Uh, but you were for the Grinch for the premiere. Yeah, I was there in LA for the premiere of the Mean One, which is coming out. Mean One, yeah. yeah. On, uh, yeah. on both streaming and DVD. So excited for my DVD. Yeah. So excited yeah. to get my physical meeting. All right, guys, that's about all the time we have, but I do have one more rapid question for Rick. Yes. Can we get a selfie? Yes. Let's do it. Everybody, come in the back. If you want to be in, come up front. Let's get in. Let's crowd in. Like every dog in a small race. I just wanted to thank everyone for coming today. It came my birthday, so it was a good day. Oh, happy birthday! Hey. Come on, guys, come on up. You want to get a picture? Coming to my booth, I'm going to give you something in my booth. Okay. All right. Yeah. 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 The, the oh, you found Chucky in it? Yeah. Right, they want to do another one. Real quick one. Let's jump in again. Hurry up, guys. <laughs> you only have to say number two. Let's go. We forgot Chucky. Are you guys all from Texas, too? Most of everybody? You? Yeah. yeah. I'm a Yankees fan, too, by the way. No, screw the There we go. I should have said that. Yankees. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you.